Right, this is Sheila. It's the 20th of February, 2022. In fact, it's my mother's birthday today, Matilda. If she was alive, she would be 110 years old today. Anyway, also remembering Cousin Barbara in Canada, who I found in the family tree. She passed away two years ago today as well. And about six years ago today, six or seven years, is it seven? No, I think it's seven years ago today, my daughter Georgia got married in a big mansion over on the Quantocks. Anyway, what I'm doing today is trying to catch up on some audio pods that I did for Ancestry. Um, which sometimes disappear, especially when the flash drives went down and they were re removed. I didn't think I'd ever hear my audio pods again. Anyway, they have been made available to me again. And the first one I'm going to try out with my camera, because I'm trying to recapture some of these. I have got them on very small cassette tapes, because in the beginning I used a very small cassette recorder a handheld one when I used to do my family tree walks and work like going around graveyards going around castles churches cathedrals um, I used my little hand recorder to reflect on stuff now this little video they usually last about 11 minutes and this one's called a reflective royal update and it was um April the 30th 2011 now I'd just like to point out that most of these cassettes were done at least 10 years ago it was before I got a camera like this my Sony with um, video facilities I then progressed to video when I was out but the all the little re cassette recorder is still very useful and I used it widely in the early days this one's from 30th of April, 2011. It was made by me. Uh, and, I, and I'm saying this update was inspired following the royal wedding yesterday between Prince William and Kate Elizabeth Middleton at Westminster Abbey, London. For I share a common ancestor with Prince William, Matilda of Huntington, the great niece of William the Conqueror. Matilda Maud married twice, and her first husband was Simon St. Liz, and her second husband, King David of Scotland, David I, um, who's all connected to Prince William. Um, so, there's a few problems with the... Um, at the moment, I've got a few problems moving that around. Not to worry. I'm not sure if this is going to work. This is an experiment at the moment. I'm trying to capture this audio. So basically, I'm using my camera to try and pick up on the audio. Um, and I'll be placing it over here near the speaker. I don't know if it's going to turn out. I don't know if it's going to play. But this is an experiment. I've got about a hundred of these. So, uh, most of them I've already saved a disc. But there's one or two that I haven't yet. And we're trying to capture them. So I'm going to click on there. Oh no, it's come down now. What that bit I was reading. Um, yeah, David, King, David, first of Scotland, belongs to Prince William. But we must remember that David and Matilda also have common ancestors. Malcolm II of Scotland, as do Prince William, the Duke of Cambridge. I have much, and I'm saying I have such a passion for family tree research and all my endeavours are a record. A small sketch illustrates a parallel tree. Yeah, I did provide um, some information about the parallel tree, which is leading down from Matilda of Huntington. I've got no idea what this audio is going to say. Okay, but I'm going to try and play it now. Um, so click to play. Might be a bit slow. I've got a feeling the um, connections are a bit weird at the moment. Oh, that's the little 
hold on, just putting on standby. Right, some few technical problems at the moment. Typical, isn't it? Because I'm trying to record this. Typical, isn't it? But we have had Storm Eunice, Storm Dudley, and there's another quite freaky weather we're having lately. So it could be that it's playing up um, with the recording. Um, very annoying indeed. I'm going to turn off again. Just try and give this a boost. Stand by again. Right, folks, I'm back on after refreshing the computer. Um, checking up the connections and everything. We're going to try again. So here we are, a reflective royal update. Um, I found another one for 2014, which I can't follow with. This, um, I've put it on Matilda of Huntington's profile because some of the other ones are very, very loaded, the galleries. So the less there is, the easier it is to play it. That's what I find. The less there is in the gallery. Let's keep our fingers crossed, folks. It wasn't playing up yesterday. It did it right away. For some reason, it's playing up today. I've got no idea why that is. I've checked everything. I'll just press this button and see if anything happens. Oh, no way. Can't believe that. It's not going to let me do it. It was doing it yesterday. Okay, over and out everyone. I'm a bit disappointed because uh, I can't even hear my own audios. It was letting me it was letting me do it yesterday. It might only let it, me do it on my profile. I'll check. Over and out a minute. Right, this is really weird, folks. A minute ago, I've turned onto my profile, turned onto the gallery and here, look, I'm going to try it again, and I pressed just an ordinary one, nothing to do with the royal family, and it played. I'm just going to try and find the one I want to do and see if it'll let me do it on my profile. It wouldn't let me do it when I put it on Medievals. See, the, see all these? It's all about... Um, different things I've done but I don't know whether I've got the reflective one on the Matilda see I've got Sheila's visit to Reading Jail there where I interviewed the Chief Education Officer of Reading Jail and Broadmoor yeah I've got I'll just see if I can find that um, yeah I've got the Hassel family well I'll turn off and come back in a sec just showing a bit about my stuff on here look yeah my visits to Cornwall this is a bit this is my gallery part one revisit to Cambridgeshire Bolsham Western Colville Burgreen Wesley Stetchworth Swaffham Bulbeck Ruhama Cambridge University, and there's all my certificates, look. All different images of me, my life. And I do this for everyone. This isn't all about me, it's the whole tree. What I'm doing, I put things on as I go. Sometimes, this is my master's degree. I put that on there. Um, that's me when I got my master's different family photos over the years and there'll be more audio somewhere an article on Medi... these are also stories lots and lots of stories I put on and then that there's more video I'm looking for the one about the royal family which might not have been allowed on for some strange reason they're very um... Well, it might be, we might find it yet I'll just turn off for a second. Right folks, I'm just going to try and record this one. It's um, a similar year, but it's not the Royal Reflection one. I haven't 
I have got that one, but I, I thought I just want to play this one if it's going to play. It's 11 minutes. It's called Update and Reflections. It's a spontaneous reflection of my progress in the family tree. I had problems back then, look. Second attempt to record, which failed. Um, however, the audio is only a brief reflection of how I feel about my tree research in 2011. It's an exciting time for UK because the census is out. Now, it's 2022 now, and the, 2000, and the 1921 census is out, which I've yet to examine. I'm looking forward to it. So it's still an exciting time. I've come on, you know, 11 years on. I'm talking to you now, but I'm now going to play you a reflection from 11 years ago. If it works, let's find out. Takes a while to warm up, I've noticed. It let me play another one a minute ago. If it plays out, I don't know what's going on. If it don't let me do this one, I've got no idea. It might not like it when I'm doing personal reflections. I've got no idea. You just gotta wait. It does take a, it does take a while to warm up. Then the screen goes white. Um, keep your fingers crossed, folks. Once it gets going, it's all right. But because I've got such a big gallery, I mean, the, the gallery for me alone is massive. Um, and what it's got to do, it's got to work its way. It's also under new people that are running at the uh, database now. It's still Ancestry, but there's somebody else um, with something called a, a media audio view. Media Uni viewer. Can't pronounce it. It's there. Look. That it used to be a flash player. Now, if it doesn't come on in a minute, I'll turn off for a second. Come back as soon as it comes on. It took a while a minute ago when I was trying to see another one, but it did play eventually. Right, over and out for a minute. Right folks, here we go again. There's the white screen. Keep your fingers crossed. I've taken us back to 1975, the 31st of May, a Saturday. Where I'm doing extracts from my personal diaries and turning them into an audio. Right, so I think this is episode 10. On reflecting what has happened over the past year since my move to Reading, I can clearly say that my life is gradually falling into a pattern. The aims planned two years ago are gradually being fulfilled. Even though the journey has been full of barriers and obstacles, Zara and I have overcome many of them, although still the road ahead is uncertain. Before I expand on my present feelings, I think I shall try and recapture some of the happenings over the year or since November. Zara has been living with the Coxhead family for some months, and even though it has been traumatic for us, we seem to have strengthened our relationship. Weekends are sometimes very con conflictual and tense, others are full of happiness and joy. Zara has developed considerably, both intellectually and physically, from a wee babe to a little lady. I did have expectations of her regressing, but in fact she is blooming in speech and mastery of social skills. The Coxhead family really love and adore her and give her so many experiences of real family life. There's a granddad who is 82 and sits in the chair smoking a pipe. Fred, the father of the home, and Mrs. Coxhead as well, Anne, all adore Zara. Then there are other foster children in their teens, Sue and Alison, full into pop music and latest romances. Stella and Cherie, both 10 and 11 respectively, who take Zara to the park. Then there's Stephen, who's four, who is a daily minder. And Mrs. Coxett, who is the heart of the family and is known by many as the salt of the earth. This woman is featured in newspaper articles because of uh, her um, devotion to caring for children. 
She has a tremendous love for children and really loves and understands them. The whole house is forever a hub of activity with visitors and children always around. I used to visit there once a day for an hour. I often went down from college, down the hill to, to Woodcote, Woodley I mean, and uh, I'd have tea and cake there quite often or a sandwich. And, um, like, and every day and she used to make this bread pudding her own recipe I mean she did give it to me once but I've lost it but I used to love her homemade pudding you know and Zara was really well fed there I'll tell you that um, you know there, there was plenty to eat it was brilliant there for her um, However, there were some conflicts when I used to go down and see Zara. Zara sometimes would uh, almost reject me, you know, like, oh, well, she had the strong bond with the cock says, and there was mum coming, and she wanted to be with me, see, really. It was, it was very distressing. I mean, Sunday nights were terrible, and I used to take Zara back. I used to cry, and I used to cry every day, actually. Every time I left Zara, I used to cry going back to college. Um, it was traumatic. It was really awful, really having to be, but it, it was the option, the better option. It was a future I was planning for, to make our lives better. And we were alone, we didn't have Peter, we were, you know, facing the world, you know, with barriers against us all the time, because being a single mum, you know, and all that. It was very hard in those days. And, and, and um, there weren't many girls in my situation that wanted to, or had the opportunity to go to college. You know, I drove myself to do it. Um, and there was, you know, lots of temptations when I was a student as well. I was still a young woman. You know, there was entertainment, there was other people to mix, you know, who were having normal lives. Well, you know, normal for young people without children. Parties and... Um, clubs. I mean, I joined the folk club and I used to do a lot of folk singing. I became social secretary of the Sociology Society as well and um, organised different events for us. Um, so I, I ha actually had a very good social life when I was a student, um, which I was able to participate in while Zara was being well looked after. So I did have a very rich student experience and um, I'm very grateful for that opportunity so you know I was able to f fulfill other sides of me um, which other people who I shared a house with who were single mums never always had that you know I mean in the summer when the, the college was closed we would often you know sometimes go to a, a nightclub if we could get babysitters and you know, drink a bottle of wine in, in the house and that. So, and talk, you know, the, about what they wanted to do and, you know, their visions of the future. So it, it was an enriching experience all round, really. I mean, fortunately, Addington Road did have a lovely little garden and Zara, during the summer holidays, a paddling pool would be put up. Zara would spend hour after hour with the other children playing in the garden, with the sand, with the water. Um, you know, so, so I tried to keep her life as normal as possible. We often had the house to ourselves when others went home to their families, which I never had that experience. In fact, I spent several Christmases, uh, well, one in particular, totally alone, just me and Zara at Christmas. Um, that was that was quite lonely and, and sad. Everyone had gone, and um, I, I never really got invited. I, I remember inviting myself once to a, a family member and they went off and, and they actually left me in their house. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Yeah, yeah. Well, easy. Anyway, going back to the diary. <clears throat> We've got Zara then. At number 30, she mainly only had me to interact with at the, um, you know, when we were together. Whereas when she was at the Coxeds, it was, it was a bustling environment, you know. So there was a, quite a dramatic change at weekends for me from being a student and the freedom of being a student to be in, study this mum with this little child. Um, but I mean, I used to um, try to uh, enjoy the experience and give Zara good quality time um, and, and try and make her life as stable as possible. 
you know. But um, it wasn't easy, like I said. I think she benefited a lot from her experiences with the Coxeds and learning to be independent. Um, and I say, it seems fantastic how Zara is now a child, my child, who can converse with me, who runs, laughs, plays hide and seek, etc. From that small, helpless, wailing bundle of flesh to a spiritual, active and beautiful child. Often I think of how our relationship would have survived had I not taken up this course of study. To live in one room in a house full of depressed, deprived and lonely mothers dependent on a weekly sum from social security, hardly enough to manage on with no intellectual stimulation. I honestly believe that I would have become totally unable to remain sane. As it is, I am attempting to further our future prospects so that I can provide Zara with a secure background both mentally and materially. This gives me the motivation to succeed. I have long vacations and shortly will be having Zara home full time for three months, in which time we may poss possibly move into a council flat. On Tuesday the 3rd of June 1975, a representative from the council housing department is paying us a visit to make an arrangement to move into a two bedroom flat. It was necessary to obtain 35 points on the housing list before we could qualify for priority, and we have. Just the thought of having our own little home at last seems unbelievable. As usually, I am still defensive as it seems impossible to me that Zara and I should be so fortunate after all only one year of being on the housing list. It would be so exciting collecting furniture, decorating and designing the geography of the rooms, our own kitchen, bathroom, living room and a bedroom each. Social services are going to help me with emergency furniture and bedding, crockery, etc. So this was an exciting time for me, but it never happened. But I think it would have happened. But I met my future husband, um, and, I, and I, I, I suddenly went weak at the knees. I suddenly became dependent. I had this person, this strong person, this knight in shining armour, I used to call him. And so a part of the drive to be independent and survive sort of went into the background a bit um, with this person coming into my life. But, um, yeah, we, we, would have, we were on target to get rehoused and rehomed. That would have happened and I would have got a local teaching job. Um, but as it was, I started treading in dangerous waters um, because I entered a relationship. I had three more children. We, we were materially successful. We went on holidays with our children and everything. We had a home. We bought a house. We moved back to Somerset. Everything looked rosy. Um, but there were underlying currents. And uh, I mean, I've always been... I can't blame it all on myself. I, I was a strong-willed person. Very independent. Um, there were conflicts between my husband and Zara, which were never resolved. And caused a great deal of pain for me and Zara and and in the end it didn't work out we, we, we went different ways and um, that's a whole new ball game then when Sheila becomes independent and free again um, but but with added responsibilities of four children to care for that will be a, a, another episode that will be a completely another chapter when I get onto that. This is still back in 75. So, I mean, I had a social worker allocated to me when I was a student. It was absolutely brilliant and helped me so much, gave me so much moral support, um, proper support, helping me in all ways. I was so grateful to her. Miss Roseanne Brew, she was called, and she, but she was leaving and went to India to work, do some social and community work. And I had developed a brilliant relationship with her. She kept con constant contact with me and Zara. Anyway, that will be another episode. That will start maybe the next um, episode 11. Over and out for now. Well, folks, I wasn't expecting that for some reason. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if I'll be, I'll be saving it, of course. It will go on disc. I don't know if I've got that one on disc. Um, so <laughs> I didn't know it was going back. I'm going to try and find the Royal Family one now. Over and out for a minute.